Welcome back to another episode of Small Girl Big Talk. My name is Wendy. And I'm RJ. And we are welcoming you to this Wedding Diaries series where we talk about all things wedding planning, mm -hmm. marriage preparation. Mm -hmm. And I am really excited for today's episode because RJ, you are getting married in less than a month. I know. It's like <laughs> three weeks, I think. <gasps> oh, three oh. weeks. No. <laughs> so how do you feel? Um, I think it's like... I think when it's like two months before, I was super stressed out yeah. about like, is there anything else that I might miss out or anything like that? But now I'm like, you know what? I just want to get it done and over with. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I reached to that point where it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to trust that I did my best yeah. to come up with the planning and everything and then just hope for the best. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm quite nervous. Okay. But I'm just trying to, like, you know, manage my mindset that, like, you know, don't be so nervous. Because if yeah. not, like, you're just going to be overstressed. Yeah. And then you're just going to be nitpicking over little things and then you're just not going to really enjoy of like what, you know, the process is and how the wedding should be like. So I'm just trying to just like calm myself down a little bit. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah I, I feel like maybe three, four months ago, I was hearing you complaining more or like yeah. stressing out about it more. Yeah. But I don't hear you talking about it much anymore. I yeah. mean, except for like the instructional messages that we receive. Like, <laughs> okay, Kevin, you're doing this. Wendy, you're doing this. And, and stuff like that, right? But yeah. like other than that, I felt like, yeah, you're just like in execution mode right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think, I think it kind of like bring you back to like how you plan for work. For yeah. example, as well, right? Mm. Like, maybe you are planning like a big event, like a launch or like a new product launch or something like that. I, I kind of like try to relate it to work, mm. which means like normally the planning part, like maybe six months before, that's the most like stressful mm. because you need to do all this research, you know, and everything. But then like when it's like less than a month, you just have to be, you, you just have to like pray to God, like everything <laughs> just going to be okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it was true. I, I kind of like complained a lot. I was like, hmm. I think it was you were definitely stressing out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't blame you. Like at that point, Matt was not no. proactive. I'm the this. wedding planner, guys. <laughs> I'm the wedding planner, marketing research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Budget. How, how much time did you have to plan this wedding? Okay, so we got engaged in June 2023, right? Yeah. So I think starting like November. Okay. Like perhaps maybe five months after that. Only then I start looking for venues. Okay. Only because I was always being told by a lot of other friends. Yeah. Not to say friends, like acquaintances who got married. They say that you have to kind of lock at least one year before. Yeah. Like when the wedding is supposed to be. Mm. So I was like, I just had that, you know, um, with some, you know, had that idea. Like, okay, I, I need to start doing the research at least by October. Mm. So I was doing research. So you guys research, knew yeah. that it's going to be in 2024, like this Ye year, this October. Yeah, so I only right? started doing kind of like the uh, venue research when yeah. we discuss of like when we are going to have the wedding. Yeah. So you don't, you can't really look for venues until you know when you're going to have your yeah, wedding exactly, date, exactly. for example. Because yeah. if not, you're just going to go there and they'll be like, oh, so when's the wedding date? Uh, uh, yeah. Not sure, right? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they need to know their availability as mm. well. So that time we know already that we might gonna do it in October. Yeah. No, at that time we thought we we're gonna be in July. Oh wow, that was yeah. soon. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, because okay. um I mean that is kind of like my fault. Okay. I want it to be in July because okay. Matt's birthday is one one, which is first January. First of January. And then my birthday is six June. Yeah. Six six. Yeah. So I thought it's cute to just like six plus one, six plus one, then seven, seven. 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 Okay, okay. Yeah. It's a cute date. Yeah. Cute idea. <laughs> Which is not really realistic actually yeah. because I think seven, seven was like a Wednesday or a Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I knew that it's not going to happen. So yeah. we found out another date and we decided to be in October. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and giving you like almost a year to prepare. Yeah. Which makes it more comfortable and less stressful, right? Yes. I think in my head... I just know the first thing that I need to book first is the venue. Yeah. 
that is the most important thing first. Correct, correct. Because there's no point, you know, booking this makeup artist and everything, but you haven't locked the venue yet. Mm. So I think when it comes to wedding planning, the first thing that you need to decide is the date. The date. That is the first thing. And then second is the venue. The venue. Yeah. So that's the first one that I would suggest maybe do it like really kind of like at least eight months before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eight months. Yeah I, yeah. I think so too. So Kevin and I, we decided that we want to get married in Q3 2025. Okay. So then since we knew it's then, so by, I think it was by July this year as well, mm-hmm, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, we got to lock down a venue then. Oh yes, you already locked a venue, yeah, right? Yeah, we, lock, we locked it down too. And for us, it's also a one year heads up. Yeah. And, and it's also because we have friends and family flying in from all over the world. Yeah. My sister is in China. His family, his brother and his nephew and his uh, sister-in-law is in Brunei. Yeah. Yeah. And my best friends are in Canada and UK yeah. and Germany. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to kind of preempt them yeah. way earlier because obviously they have to make travel you know, plans. Yeah, travel and plans. they probably need to spend like new budget for the yeah. travels and all that. Yeah. Um, so that's how we decided on like a, a date and we feel like a year ahead is just nice for us yeah. to start planning yeah. so we locked down the venue yeah. but that's pretty much everything we've done so far trust me even myself like I only started really kind of like come up with like the Excel sheet the, for the budget and everything like that maybe early this year okay. like January Okay. so I booked the venue in November yeah. and then I just give myself like about two months before I start really get into the gear of like planning Yeah. Yeah. and which I think this is like kind of like the big topic that we want to talk about today Yeah. yeah just to is. discuss about like the planning and the preparation itself Yeah. and I think this is also like a good idea just to like me to share with you and advise Advice, give advice of yeah, like, like when you should do this or when you should do not. Yeah, do things that. you wish yeah. you knew like ten yeah. months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because I'm I've not done much. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You still have how how many months left? I still have I about think. eleven months. Okay. 11 months. It's it's still comfortable, you know. Mm. As soon as you get to like the six month timeline, right? I'll probably be panicking <laughs> already. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that maybe you wanted to kind of like understand within like maybe the timeline itself like I mean we talk about the venue like okay at least we do it eight to a year before eight months to one year before I think I think honestly right for me when it comes to this wedding planning I'm not too anxious about it because mm. in my day job I plan events yeah and I'm quite I have the idea of like what I need to do like getting an excel with the agenda because once you have the agenda then you can lock down like you have an idea on what you can negotiate with the photographers and the videographers yep. which is yep. the next on my list yeah yeah I'm yep. in the process of like reaching out to photographers to mm. understand what are their offerings how do I I'm I'm kind of struggling to choose yeah um my vendors okay um but I think it's a process that I kind of need to like hop into conversations and talk to them. How did you decide on your photographers? All right. So, um, some... Okay. I've, so, the first step was to book the venue, right? Yeah. So, the main thing also about the venue also whether... Does the venue also comes with decor? Okay. Um, comes with, like, catering. Yeah. Some venue also come with, like, photographer and videographer mm. as well. So, if you're able to find a venue that can cater all that, right? Mm. You kind of, like check like do so many boxes yeah like in a way so um my venues um they kind of like provide catering Mm. and also decor Mm. and they also provide videographer and photographer oh wow yeah but it's just that i don't go with their photographer and videographer because i kind of like have my own aesthetic that i want right so but you you can be fortunate to find a venue that kind of like offer all that as well Mm. so um i decided my photographer uh, I know I have to decide it after I book the venue. Yeah. So the first few things, uh, I'm not sure about like other countries, but in Malaysia, like makeup artists, photographer, they also get booked up very early. Yeah. So I would suggest like maybe um, eight months to six months before you mm. really lock down okay. your photographer and videographer. Because yeah. especially during wedding season. Yeah. Towards the end of the year, that's when usually people get married. Yeah. So you just worry that during that date that you want, they are fully booked up. Yeah. So yeah. so the apparently, especially if the wedding date that you have in mind, it's like a auspicious date. Yeah. Right. It yeah. gets booked up very quickly. Yeah. So I kind of found this wedding photographer that I quite like, mm-hmm. um, and I was just kind of chill about it because 
she was photographing my friend's wedding and I'm, mm. I kind of like her style, right? Yeah. So I reached out to her and told her, it's like, hey, this date, are you available? And she's like, yes. And she sent me over her rates and it's above my budget, right? So I'm kind of like just chilling about it. It's, like, it's not coming soon, but she just messaged me a few days ago and okay. she's like, someone else inquired about the date. So uh. you want, do you want me to hold it? for you yep. then now I'm like okay I need to be more proactive in researching other yep. ones to yep. compare yep. before I decide yeah um, what is your aesthetic like when it comes to I want it to be really candid same yeah same, same. I don't like superposing um, you know even when I had uh, when I first reached out to the photographer right yeah. I told them that I don't want like 80% of the photos or the video is only of me and Matt yeah I told them I want 50-50 which is like 50% me and Matt and mm. 50% the guests mm. because there's no point of like looking through all these photos and just looking at my face you know <laughs> I, I want to see like other people's reactions yeah. like you know maybe when I'm walking down the aisle and then they capture like you know emotions and stuff yeah. like that because there are some photographers that don't know how to take candid shots okay so that's yeah. that but it's also I think you need to have two photographers and two videographers yeah. to be able to capture this yes which yes. then affects the pricing a lot yes yeah yes. so this is something that like like for Kevin right he doesn't care about care much about this yeah, yeah. so he's like why do we need videographers why yeah. do, we, do we need two photographers and stuff like that and I'm like I know we need it because mm. I want to capture, like you said, like yeah. also the audience reaction and yeah. and basically kind of like a 360 experience of the full wedding yeah. instead of just us. Yeah. 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 Um, another thing to add is that some um, photographers or videographers, uh, I mean not videos, but photographers, right? They have a limited number of um, photos that they will give to you after the Ooh, event yeah. which I don't like yeah. um, it will be some sort for example like maybe 3,000 ringgit for let's say 150 photos only so like sad. 150 <laughs> edited photos okay, yeah. um, and I don't like that so yeah. I the, the photographer that I managed to kind of like lock um, they say it's unlimited yeah so it can range between 4,000 to 5,000 mm. shots actually which yeah. I really really like that Yeah, because then I don't have to like look at it and think, is that it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that's yeah. also one of my main criteria mm. when I look at photographers. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really up to you. So I've seen some friends where their photos are very artistic. And some people like that. Yeah. Right. And but for me it's more so capturing the emotions. Yeah. So I was just at another wedding this over uh this past yes, weekend. I saw. It's my best friend's wedding. Yeah. Um, and her photographers are the kind that I think he wants to make sure that he captures nice angle. Okay. And and so he kept stopping them in the process of like the ceremony okay. to pose nicely. Like, oh, oh, that, please look at the daughter and all that. Uh, I think the photos will turn out perfect. Yep, yep, and it's yep. also because they don't have a videographer and all that, right? Yep. So they want to capture the most aesthetic one. Yep. But I feel like for me, that might not... that. Might, like this wedding is when I realized like, okay, I don't want my photographers to stop me during the ceremony. Like yeah, I'm yeah, in the yeah. middle of crying in my mouth. I was like, oh, Bright, can you turn and look at me right now? Like, I don't want that, okay? <laughs> like you're crying. <laughs> 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 right, right. So, so these are little things that I, I'm fortunate enough that I'm attending a lot of wedding right yeah, now yeah, that yeah. I can take note of the things that I want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is something that I realized over this weekend is like, oh yeah, I need to figure out more things. I think um, you can also... Okay, so for example, if let's say you have like two separate events happening throughout the whole day. Mm. Let's say maybe you have like for your case, maybe ROM and then only after that you have your reception, for example, right? I think you can choose how many photographers that you want depending on what kind of activity that's going to happen during that event. True. So let's say for example, maybe for my tea ceremony, I know it's not going to be a lot of like activities or events going to happen right so I'm okay with just one photographer and one videographer ah. but then in during the reception I'm having two photographers and two videographers okay. so at least like I kind of like save my budget a little bit yeah. for a certain event okay. because I know during the reception that is when I'm going to do like guessing games and then like oh, you know oh, I'm like quite uh, excited for your dancing agenda dancing and stuff <laughs> like that <laughs> <laughs> so um, you can also cater to that it doesn't have to be like for the whole straight of like your event mm. so you can actually just like okay get a package and then just add additional extra photographer like for example 
mm. from my end is just like another 400 ringgit oh. just to add another photographer for that event. That's true. I, I can actually do that. Yeah. yeah. So you can play around. It doesn't have to be, for example, like um, some some photographers, they do like maybe four hours coverage, six hours coverage, so yeah. depending on the coverage as well. Yeah. So if let's say it's a very short limited time, then you kind of like trying to figure out when is the best time for you to have this more than one photographer, mm. for example. Yeah. That's yeah. true, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Are you having videographers? Yes. You are, right? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um I I mean I had I had a meeting with them last week yeah. to discuss about the mood. So I really like very vintage kind of like retro feeling. You know like the Super 8 film effect? I didn't watch Super 8. No. Um it's a very 90s okay. kind of like I mean obviously we, we don't have that kind of yeah. For example, video that can capture 90s videos like yeah. that, right? But they have editing. Is it like a very edit. home camera yes. style? Okay, yes, okay. yes. I like that. I don't like where it's like like slow motion okay. and then like cinematic yeah. and then dun dun dun. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, if I'm a royalty, perhaps, maybe, maybe but yeah. I, I, I mean, that's my preference. Okay, I think yeah. your vibe is very much like me. I think yeah. we want our ved- our wedding documentation to look very... Yeah, it's a documentation. Yeah. It's not an... Uh, like an act. Uh, yeah, like an act <laughs> or a movie experience. We yeah. want it to be something that we look back and be like, oh. Yeah, this is so us. Yes, right, yes. right. I, oh, it's gonna feel very cozy looking yeah. at your videos and your photos. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our vibe is very similar. Yeah, I think I think when we were talking about venues as well, you were like, "Hey, RJ, I also looked at the venue." Yeah, right? your, your venue was one of the choices that I want because <laughs> both our weddings are quite intimate. Yes, and yes. we are only inviting like close friends and families yeah. to attend that. Yeah. Um, oh my god! Yes, the number of guest lists. Also, it's a major factor to like, you know, how much you're going to pay for your venue as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if you want maybe to invite 500 or like, you know, more than 500 packs, you need to get like a ballroom or something, you know, or even a hall that can cater to that. Mm. And I think when I was looking for a venue, the number of packs kind of like make it so hard for me to find the right like venue as well okay. because it's very little it's only 100 packs yeah so you can't go into a ballroom and then like just like have it's 10, look so 10 empty. tables yeah it's gonna look so empty <laughs> so yeah um, guest list will also depend like will also to kind of like determine when where you're gonna have like the event itself like. yeah so yeah. Kevin and I what we did at the early stages were we listed down all yeah. the close friends and family that we wanted to invite mm-hmm. then we have a rough idea of the number of how many people we are hosting yeah then we start looking into venues that could fit around that number yeah. um, and in the end we found a venue that's actually lesser that can cater to a lesser packs than what we had in our list mm-hmm. so then we had to short list like okay I don't think we can invite everybody yeah. which are the ones that we're gonna like quote unquote sacrifice on the list um, and, and then we'll kind of play by it right so like the RSVP process I, I assume it will be like you invite the first batch of people first yep. and then if they can make it if they cannot make it then yes. you open up to invite more yes, friends yes, right? yes I know because I mean after I send out RSVPs they are all kind of like hey can I bring plus one yeah. hey can I you know but it's like I, I, I always going to reply by saying um, can but just wait if there is an, an opening mm. then I will let you know yeah. and obviously like I will make sure that you can bring a plus one for yeah. example because yeah. for example maybe the person when I kind of like draft out my guest list yeah. maybe still single mm. not even in a relationship yeah, right so you're in your head like you don't even think that they need a plus one yeah. but then like because you know you plan the wedding one year ahead yeah. and then suddenly this person got into a relationship yeah. and of course you feel bad right <laughs> like you you also met met this guy or this girl for yeah, example yeah. and then you can't like oh sorry I can only invite you but I can't invite you yeah. right it's like but, not nice so, so Kevin and I are pretty and I are pretty straight up yeah because we we debate right we have more than more people that we wanted to invite than what the venue can cater to so uh, there are some friends that we are meeting right now that we are pretty straight up we are like yeah. um, the wedding is happening on this date I'm inviting your boyfriend, but I might not be inviting you. I hope you understand. I'm very straight up. And there are even some friends that we know haven't made it to the list, right? And we are like, we are getting married, but we might not be inviting you. We are. (laughs) We don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. But at the same time, 
I kind of want to give you a heads up as well. I don't want yeah. you to look at the photos and think like, why didn't you invite me? Yeah. And I mean, because we give them so far ahead heads up, right? Yeah. They are all, oh, of course, they are understanding. Like, I don't know whether they're angry at us at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yep, most yep. of our friends are very understanding and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, no worries. I feel like people in our generation, in our age, it's a little bit more different than our parents' generation. True. I true. know that for my dad, right? Uh, when his friend's son got married, Another one of my dad's friend attended a wedding alone without bringing the family. Okay. The groom's dad was actually offended. Wow. Yeah, there are traditional people that might yeah. feel offended if they are not inviting. Yeah. Uh, if they are not invited or if they don't show face kind yep. of thing. Yeah, but I feel like people in our generation understands. At least yeah. my friends understand. Yeah. It, I'm not sure about you, but when I'm planning out the guest list, um, my mom was like, can I invite this person? Can I invite this person? Can I invite this person? And then you're like, ma, I already told you it's like 100 packs, 100 yeah. packs. Oh, but I thought can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your mom. Yeah, I think you told me your mom gave yeah. you a list. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just so funny because like, she was just saying, hey, can we go for lunch? And then mm. we went for lunch. Mm. And then while we're eating, yeah. my mom just like slid like kind of like a, a note. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> my guest list Ooh. And then I'm like Ma And I open it And it was like Around 30, 40 people Ooh. And I say Ma Where are all these people Gonna be outside of the venue Just like yeah. waiting yeah, I mean um, It's like Sometimes usually It's your parents Yeah That would probably Going to make You know Because they want it certain way Or mm. they want it like this Da 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 But you just have to know How to manage Formula, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I already managed my mom's expectations one year before. Mm. I keep telling her that hundred, 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 <laughs> intimate, yeah. intimate. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah so. Kevin and I had no choice uh, because we wanted the wedding to be our style in yeah. KL. So we actually have to do two other weddings in our hometowns All right. to cater to what our family wants. Got right? it. And, and I get where my mom is coming from. Like she wants to share with her family and, and our relatives and all that, that there's a big auspicious thing that's yeah. happening in a family. It's yeah. a celebration. I understand that. Yeah. It's just that if I were to invite all of my extended family members, then I wouldn't be able to celebrate with my friends. Yeah. Right? So we yeah. had to do it separately. Okay. Okay. Uh, which so is total, extra work. there will be three <laughs> events then. Wow. Three events. But uh, we've also managed their expectations that the ones in our hometowns are going to be very, very simple. Got it. Like I might not be even wearing a wedding gown or anything Got for it. the it's ones a celebration yeah. dinner in that yeah, sense probably lunch or dinner but like it's just us coming together having a meal together yeah. and because we we come from Chinese families so we will be having the tea ceremony mm -hmm. in our hometowns yeah that's it yeah that's it we come for a meal I'll, I'll give you the tea and yeah that's all yeah yeah as a sign of respect to our traditions and 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 our, our I guess our ancestors and all that too. Like. Understand. Yeah, yeah. I think right after when we talk about the guest list, the venue, the photographers, I think the next thing that we should touch upon is like the makeup artist, Ooh. the hairstylist. Okay, I want to hear more about that from you because yeah. I've to be honest, like when it comes to the wedding, right? I don't care so much about that. I know a lot of brides is like, oh my gown, my dream gown, my dream style. But yeah, yeah. I have no idea much about it okay because for me it's all about oh I'm having everybody to celebrate uh, and so it's and it's about the photo style and the video style but I have no idea where to get started with that so tell me more about how have you found your makeup artist what did you learn in that and a wedding gown so it's the same as uh, what I learned about it is that I know in for example in Chinese wedding culture you tend to get like one person that can do everything that meaning they can do the hair they can do the makeup um, yeah. That is what I was being told. Yeah. Um, but for Malay, for example, we have a separate person for everything. One person to do the makeup, one person to do the hair, one person to do if you're wearing hijab, one person to do the henna. Ooh. It has to be separate person because they have, there's none that can do all. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you have to imagine it kind of like at first make me feel so stressed because they also charge based on the per event okay. and what I meant by that is not per day oh so let's say for example for my for my event it's like 
um, six hours, right? So we start with tea ceremony. So that is one event. Mm. And then the reception is one event. Mm. So it means I have to pay twice. Huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's when I'm like, there was this one makeup artist that I really like, but he kind of like cost around 2.5K. Just for makeup? For one event, yeah. And oh I'm my. like, I'm not going to spend 5K. No, <laughs> like just too makeup. Much. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I think during the makeup and the hair research, that's when I was more mind blown. Because I didn't expect it's going to be that expensive. Yeah, I know it's expensive. Yeah. Somehow, when the event turns into a wedding, there is just this premium to Depress. all the services. Yep. Yeah, but I didn't expect like 5K for, for makeup. Okay, that that's is just too makeup. Much. Yeah. yeah. And then hair, like 1.2K per event. So you're going to spend about 2.5K just for hair. <gasps> and then you're thinking of like, then I need to make sure that I do different set of hairstyles, right? Right, because you make it what? worth it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> You can't just like do. You can't just spend like one point two k and then just for like a long hair with a crown. That's yeah. it, right? You have to do something with it. Yeah. So I'm making sure that my money <laughs> worth. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. So that's the part where I kind of make my mind blown. Uh. But um, when I decided, because I like very, because I have very like oily skin, so mm. you have to make sure also the makeup artist able to know or mm. able to, you know, get to make sure that you don't look oily at certain hours. Yeah. Um, for example, my wedding is going to be a garden wedding. Yeah. So I need to find a makeup artist who knows how to make sure that it doesn't kind of like melt it down yeah. under the sun. Yeah. And not every makeup artist know how to do that. Uh. So you have to look through their portfolios and see whether... Because sometimes they share videos as well. Yeah. And to see, to see whether did they do this in the, in the, at the garden or is it like always indoor? Because mm. if it's indoor, it's a lot easier to find a makeup artist, yeah. to be honest. You don't yeah. have to be very picky about it. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 And have you done your trial makeup? Is there... Did your makeup artist provide that? So that's the thing. Y- in order to do a trial makeup, you have to also pay the full amount. Oh, oh so you do? Yes. Oh, okay. And that's why <laughs> <laughs> I just have to like make sure that I got the right reference, mm. you know, the photo, the makeup that I want. Mm. And then just pray to God. <laughs> that but that's one thing that you can actually do during the event itself. Okay. If there's one point, like for example, when the makeup artist, you know, do a certain colour and you don't really like it, you have to actually say it straight away. Yeah. Yeah, don't just like, and then, and then after that, complain like, oh, I don't really like my yeah. makeup. Okay, I've you seen know? TikTok videos. Okay, that's where I consume all my content, right? Yeah. About brides like hating how they look on their wedding day because they hate the makeup and the hair. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there was this bride that actually like really, she cried and then she cleared off everything and she did her own makeup. Yeah, imagine paying for that and then yeah. having to do this. But yeah. I think most importantly, yeah. I, th- I think it depends <laughs> on... Wh- Okay, some some a lot of people have a different view of like what they actually would like to prioritize mm. for their wedding. Mm. Let's say maybe um you are a bride that don't really care about how you look. Yeah. You just care about like spending that time with your family and friends, for mm. example. Mm. But if you're someone who really care about how you look, then you have to look deep deeper into like would you willing to pay extra for yeah. the trial makeup? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because you have to make sure that you do going to look good. Yeah, and right? you feel good on that day. Yeah, but my yeah. end, I'm just, ah, I'm just going to wing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you look good, so you're going to look good no matter what, right? Yeah. yeah. If, okay, besides photographer, videographer, makeup artist, what else? Mm. I mean, your venue comes with decorations. Yes. Um, did you get much say about how you would like to decorate the space? Oh, yes. Okay, yes. that's good. So, I kind of like, you know, Pinterest? Okay. So, yeah. I create a mood board. Yeah. Get inspiration and then just give it to the stylist. Okay. And then after that, they will create a mood board okay. based on my, my style. Yeah. And then see whether I like it or is there anything I want to tweak and everything mm. so from my end because it's like Malay plus Chinese culture yeah, yeah. so I try to make it like very old classic Malay oh plus God, so oriental yeah but I don't want to disappoint you I hope that it's a very nice no. decor though no, but your aesthetic it's is always, your aesthetic <laughs> and my aesthetic is quite similar so I'm, I'm really looking forward to yeah, it yeah so it's, it's very hard to because you want to make sure both cultural kind of like presented yeah. during the day mm. so there's a lot of factors to think to, through like yeah. you know 
is there enough Malay here? Is there enough Chinese, you know, here? Because yeah. you don't want to like offend it both side of a family or anything like that, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that is also very, very tricky for me at first. Mm. But um, I just trust the, the process, yeah. you know. Um, at the end of the day, as long as I make sure nothing is offensive or anything like that, I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm sure yeah. you'll be fine. So... You are getting into an interracial marriage yeah. And if I'm not mistaken You are having your nikah this coming Thursday, right? In two days' time? No! It's, eh? As in 10 October Eh? I thought Kevin told me it's happening this week No, as in 10 October Thursday It's a Thursday But it's on the 10th of October Oh, Kevin thought it's this Thursday <laughs> Somehow Wait, don't, don't tell me that he already booked leave or something No, 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 oh, no Okay, no. okay, okay No, no <laughs> Sorry. It'll be burned. The, the wrong information that our fiancés get, right? The man. <laughs> Speaking of that, that's the reason why also I invited all the Dulang boys okay. like into our like the chat that we I already created. Yes. Just to make sure there's no miscommunication from our partners. Yeah, somehow so, I don't know why the grooms are so reluctant to communicate more about the wedding or they just feel like they don't need to. Yeah, you know what? I, I keep saying to Matt, like, why don't you say it? No, but you are the director. <laughs> yeah, sure. Director. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so right. it was supposed to be like a bridesmaids group and then a groomsmen group. Yes, but yes. we ended up just blending everything together yeah, for RJ's yeah. wedding. Because there was like this time I say, hey, have you checked the sizes? Yeah. Have you checked the sizes? Have you checked mm. the sizes? And I am just get frustrating <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> where is the size? Because <laughs> do you remember I kind of like got all your dresses done like in March. Yeah, we remember? Ahead. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like last month and it still hasn't been sorted yet for yeah. the boys. And, and I'm okay, just to be honest, even Kevin was surprised. Kevin thought Matt has everything covered <laughs> and then he realised he did not. I was like, oh, I think RJ is arranging it now. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, your girl have to be the one that got all the, all the shirts and stuff. I know, but you're not the only one. Um, so I was at another wedding this past weekend, like I said, yeah. right? And the groomsmen were all so clueless about the agenda. I was like, oh, you guys didn't know there's an agenda. You know, for us, we have a spreadsheet with who's the PIC and all that stuff. All bridesmaids got there, but the groomsmen were so clueless and they are like... Why did we know about anything? Yeah, so you know I have an Excel sheet, right? To I, kind of like yeah. um, make sure I don't go over budget. And yeah. then I have like on this Excel sheet, it, we, I call it wedding dumb, like mm-hmm. wedding dumb. And then there's even uh, like different tabs, for example, the mood of save the date, um, the itinerary, yeah. task list. Yeah. And remember when I sent a screenshot of like, what is the help that we would require yeah. like from you guys, right? And I remember Mira was saying to me, RJ, you know what Reza said? Wow, there's an Excel sheet for this? <laughs> Duh! <laughs> we have it too! <laughs> and I think it's just because I like... I, I, I'm the kind of person that really into attention to detail. Yeah. So, um, I, as I like to be a bit chill and lay back, by then, as right? I try, I try yeah. to be, but yeah. I, I also have this another side of me where I want to make sure everything is happening according to place. Yeah. yeah. But there's also another side of me like, hey, just like, Maybe maybe things are just going to happen No, okay. but for me, right I feel like these Excel sheets and processes They are what is going to help us to chill on that day Yes Because yes. we know exactly everything is already delegated We yep. know who's doing what yep. We just need to remind them to do it a little yep. bit And then it's all taken care of yep. So these like, preparations that we have ahead of time These Excel sheets Are going to help us to be a very calm bride on that day True Right. So it's. I feel like it's the opposite It's not that you are intense It's more that you are prepared so that you don't need to be a bridezilla on that day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think Matt is more of a bridezilla than me. <laughs> <laughs> because he wasn't prepared ahead of time, so now because, he's panicking. Yeah, because, I mean, clearly on this whole like process, I'm the one that doing the research and then after yeah. I kind of like compile maybe the top two yeah. and then I will share it to Matt mm. and then Matt will be the one, yep, I don't want this one, I want this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> That's why I say he's more of a bridezilla than no. me. <laughs> but but um but I think he knows that 
if he's also kind of like get into it, I yeah. will get more stress. Yeah. Because he have his way of like, I mean, come on, he's a project manager. Oh, oh, oh yeah. And I don't want to be feeling like I'm being managed sure. by a manager and stuff like that, mm. right? So it kind of like, 50, I have, I'm like 50 50. F- like how I feel about it How I wish He also involved more mm. But also 50% I'm like Oh thank god You're not Like into yeah. it more Actually than- I'm quite I'm, I, I prefer that Kevin doesn't involve. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's our wedding. Yeah, but yeah. But a part of me is just hope that he just let me do everything so I can do things my way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I get where, where you're coming from about that. Um, but we kind of got sacked away. I was going to talk about more about the interracial marriage, Oh, yes, right? yes, I wanna, yes. I actually want to ask you, what is happening on Nika? Oh, okay. So Nika, um, is that kind of like a Malay word? Yeah. Um, so if we... Translated is like a solemnization. Okay. So it's a process where the father of the bride will shake hands with the groom. Okay. And you kind of like have to say a certain sentence mm-hmm. in order to officiate the wedding. Okay. Yeah. So for example, okay, just pretend that I'm the father of the bride and then I will say, Hey, I let go my daughter, da 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 mm. at um certain like a dowry, um, let's say three hundred ringgit. Okay. And then Matt have to kind of repeat it back. Okay. In one breath, and then one af- breath. Yeah. Why so specific? One breath. I, I don't know. <laughs> so if if it, if let's say for example, um, the witnesses yeah. say that like, hey, it wasn't clear. Okay. It wasn't clear as one breath. Yeah. And then we have to redo repeat it again. It. Yeah, I yeah. think I think my cousin actually had to repeat it because <laughs> it was not clear. It's it's yeah. more about the clear the clarity, clarity of the scent of the word that you say. So, huh. for example, it cannot be, I take Rawaida binti Jamil Jamil with, for example, uh, like that. It has to be, I take Rawaida binti Jimmy Elias Ahmad Jamil. It has to be some Ooh. yeah very very clear. Okay, yes. so, so it's actually a very... Like Nikah itself, it's a very simple ceremony. Yes, yes. Okay. It's, it's, oh, it's basically... It doesn't have to be very grand. Um, normally, people can just do it in a mosque, mm. for example. Mm. Um, and then you would just need to have two witnesses. Mm. Um, and then that is the time where you're going to kind of put r- your rings. Okay. Um, you know, um, and then that's considered like your ROM. Yeah, I was going to ask it's you. Like is your it ROM? ROM? It kind of like ROM. But you don't sign papers on it. Sign day. papers. Oh, so that's when you sign your papers. Yeah. So you're not signing your papers on the ceremony. No. Oh, no. okay. No. So basically, that's your ROM, but like yes. the Malay, uh, Malay Muslim culture. Malay Muslim culture. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you are doing yours about one week, almost one week. Uh, two no, days before. Two days before the event. Okay. Before the wedding ceremony. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, initially, I wanted to do everything in one day. Yeah. But just worried that. It might be rushed. Actually, it's very stressful. You know, to do three events in, in within six hours. Yeah. So uh, I just thought maybe a bit better for me to just do it like uh, you know separate. Yeah. Um. Plus, nikah should be quite very simple. Yeah. Um. Event. So mm. that's why I decided to like take it out. Yeah, that's what me yeah. and Kevin is doing. We are going to separate the registration thing on yeah. another day. We haven't decided yeah. on a date yet. Um, like for us It's like Just to keep it simple Yeah So we don't need to be too stressed out On yeah. the actual like Fun ceremonial day Yeah Yeah yeah. yeah. So I, that's why I think The 12th is mainly Just a bit more of like Really like a wedding party In that yeah. sense I yeah. want it to be like that That's how I view yeah. My wedding as well mm. Yeah What else Hmm How about like Your what, what do you Okay I know you said That you don't really care much about like how you look and everything right yeah. so does it mean that you don't have a mood board of like how you want to your dress to be or not the dresses yet yeah. I have a I have an idea of how I want my wedding to feel like because the venue that I chose it's quite a it's a very nice boutique hotel okay and the yep. interior it's very kind of western style right yep. so I kind of I feel like the idea that I want to have it's like a retro style also, yeah, yeah. but maybe more Western-ish. Understood. Uh, it's almost like retro American style. Got it. Maybe. Got it. Um, I haven't finalized that yet, but I'm slowly putting together the mood board. Okay. Um, then I'm gonna approach like decors and and all that stuff. Um, I'm procrastinating on everything, but in terms of wedding gown, I feel like I want to go to a bridal house to try it, it out. Yeah, 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 yeah to yeah. try it out to know what style suits me. Yeah, yeah. that's what I did as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can get your your outfit these days, right? Yeah. Like we have Shein, we have like a lot of, you know, cheaper places. Yeah. But the thing about it is that you're not sure your body 
can cater? Is it more on the A line? Yeah. Or is it nicer like, in a ball gown? Yeah. You know, for Mermaid example. Cards. Yeah. Because for me, I wanted an A line initially, mm. but then when I go on and you know and try out, turns out like. I don't really good on <laughs> in airline. Do we look shorter? Is that why? Um, uh, yeah, it doesn't really kind of like look doesn't look proportionate on my body. Mm. So I I found that like those princess ball gown, yeah. but not not the very big one, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. more just a little bit. So it kind of like accentuate on my top. Okay. So it it makes me look a bit more nicer looking. Mm. So it doesn't really concentrate on certain things. Yeah. Like because if it's really tight, right? Yeah. I was worried about how I'm gonna move. Yeah. As well. Um. So that's why I think it's very good for you to go and try out first. Yeah. Before you even buy, let's say for example. Yeah. I'm not too yeah. sure if I'm gonna buy a dress mm. because I'm kind of lazy to figure out how to store it and, yeah. and dry clean it and yeah. all that. Yeah. Um. So I might be. I might be renting, but a part of me also kind of want a custom address and I can keep it and yes. restyle it on my anniversary and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like the idea is nice, yeah. um, but I haven't decided on it yet. That's what I, at first my plan is to actually rent out everything. Yeah. But then I realized that like, I want to have a bit of a token yeah. from that wedding day itself. Mm. So I thought, how about I tailor made my kind of like baju nikah meaning okay. my nikah attire mm. so that's the only thing that I tailor made but yeah. the rest all I rented yeah. um, and I didn't do like a one dress I kind of like do two piece mm. so I can mix match ah. my inside or the outside yeah. so I'm kind of like going to wear a kabaya okay. so it's a very Malay um, traditional, traditional attire, attire. Yeah. so inside I did like a corset dress Ooh. So, meaning next time, I can just wear it with another, I don't know, like maybe like a shawl or something mm. to go for another event. Mm. And the outer piece is the kabaya itself. Yeah. And I make it that way so that next time if I go like maybe a, an, a launch event or anything, no, I, I, can wear, I can wear you, for jeans. You attending your kid's wedding with that outfit. <laughs> like, oh. I, mean, I hope I can still fit by that time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think... Um, it depends on you. Like, you, mm. you, if you want to rent, go ahead. You mm. know, if if you want to tailor me and you have that kind of money, yeah. go ahead as well. But uh, in my end, also, I wanted to have something of a token. Yeah, that's why I decided to do okay, like, tailor me one thing. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. Um, I think for shoes. Um, I think you don't have to like spend a lot on yeah. it. Um, like I, I spent only hundred ringgit I've on my shoes. I've not even thought about shoes at all. <laughs> I don't even care. I was, I know for sure I will buy a, I buy a new pair of white sneakers because I want to dance in it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But of course I would. I'm, I'm very short, so I need a pair of heels that yeah. I feel comfortable in. Yeah. But I honestly didn't really care much about shoes. Do yeah. you, do you feel that in terms of food, mm. like? Do you kind of like have to think first about whether your guests can kind of like have this kind of meal, uh, no, for example? I, because the, the venue that we chose already have the food option comes with it, right? Mm-hmm. So um, we're just going to have what the have. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are going to have the chance to try the menu before that to decide if we want a Western style yeah. and or a Hidang style menu. Understand. So because the hotel that we booked, they're actually known for their Malaysian cuisines, uh-huh, uh-huh. which is quite interesting to me. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna, we are going to probably arrange a menu test tasting uh, which is complimentary, thank yep. goodness. Yeah. Um, and then we will decide on it. But I'm not too picky with what meals. Because someone actually told me this before. And I feel it's very true that like, of all the weddings that I've attended before, you don't really remember much about how the food tastes. All right. So it shouldn't be a big source of pressure for you to stress about. Understand. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. I think we kind of like... the. F- all the things that we mentioned earlier in the video, right? Yeah. I think those are the main things that I feel that you should plan in advance yeah. when it comes to planning the wedding itself. Mm. But all this nitty gritty, for example, like your door gifts, oh, yeah. um, wedding invitation cards and stuff like that, I think you can even do it two, three months before. It yeah. doesn't have to be like way early in advance mm. because the supply is always there. Yeah, <laughs> There's no like... Oh no, I can't get a door gift in time, for example. Yeah, like, you can the, pretty yeah. much get everything sorted in a week like, if it's really messed up at the yeah, end. Yeah, like or I ordered from Etsy and oh. it's like it arrived within one week. Nice. So um 
I think you, there are certain things that you don't really have to plan in advance. Mm. Um, but the one that I think I mentioned earlier are those that I feel that I would give you an advice yeah. just to get it locked down yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, just because you also don't want to like, like, like you mentioned, like the bride said he doesn't like how the makeup looks mm. like. And then, you know, you don't like how your photos turns out like. And I think um, that is why you need to do your due diligence. Yeah. And then just make sure that that's the kind of style and the vibe that you want. Yeah. 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 What else? I think, I I think, think those are the main things yeah, that I Yeah, I think we've covered pretty much the main things that I want to talk about. Yeah. Do you have any other questions or like maybe um, you feel that is there a certain area that you want to like have advice on? I don't know. Are Not you going to have a wedding vows? Yeah, you are just? doing that. Okay, that's okay. that's the part. Okay, so I actually recorded an episode with Kevin last okay, week. And okay. that's the one that's going to go up before this episode. Yep, yep. And I was telling him that that's what I'm looking forward the most. And I'm already tearing up thinking about Aww. my vows or his vows Aww. already. Like these are the things that I care more about in the wedding. Yeah. Um, and and that's what I'm looking forward to. But these are the kind of things that I just need to plan myself. Yeah. Right? It's not yeah. so much about vendor and all that. It's just in the process of thinking about it like what are the things that I care about in a relationship that I want to mm-hmm. make sure in a vow and how do I want a vow to be like and because of these things right I know for sure I'm going to cry in my wedding so then I know my makeup artist has to be good in waterproof makeup yep yeah so like yep. these are the little details yep. right you kind of know what kind of bright you will be yep. and what you care about the most then you yep. kind of plan everything around it that's why I said like don't just book because you have seen like their portfolios and stuff. Yeah. Ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Ask a lot of questions. Like even when I was choosing my makeup artist, mm. I literally asked them like, how comfortable are you about doing a makeup like that is for a garden wedding? Yeah. How many have you done? Yeah. I answer, I, because you have to, make, like I said, do, do your due diligence. Yeah. And I think speaking about the wedding, wedding vows, right? I just want to ask you as well. Does it normally happen before ROM or is it happening it's during, during the ceremony? ROM? It's like a ceremony that um, people do it. And I think it depends on how you want to get married because okay. we're not really doing the church holy matrimony as well. Okay. Uh, so some people, it, it's included in the holy matrimony, right? Got but it. But for me and Kevin, it's pretty much an event that we're putting in together All based right. on our mix and match. Okay, okay. Um, but the wedding set I've been to that has vows, it usually happens in a short ceremony before dinner. So they, it's like oh. entrance and then vow and then ring exchange and then end of ceremony and then dinner. Which I think oh. that's how my wedding is going to be like. So, okay. Just, just want to get your advice, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So if, if I'm planning to do it as well. Yeah. So let's say, for example, it's a, during my dinner reception and, yeah. my, and the guests are all seated. Yeah. And then the MC will announce yeah. my entrance. entrance. And then, so basically, while we're still standing, yeah, and everyone is seated, mm. that's when we are going to exchange I think that our vows. Good, is yeah, that I that? think that would be a good time because uh, everyone's all the attention is on you. That's before everyone starts eating and get into their conversations and yeah. gets very busy and all that. So yeah. I would rather that time to be when Got it happens. It. Are okay. you gonna do it? Like it's three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna stress out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, ooh, ooh. but it will be beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I, we wanted. It's just that because considering Matt is also quite a bit like private, he's person, very private. So I just don't know whether she, he is okay to do it in front of everyone yeah. or not, or, yeah. or does he prefer for us to have like a, a, a private vow and you, you can know, record like it? Just the two of us, where yeah. the videographer will record it. Yeah. And it's not in front of everyone. That would be nice too. Because I think that maybe very come you. across like genuine or yeah. something like that. I, I don't know because I mm. I'm just thinking about Matt right now. Mm. Um, it's just more of like if we're gonna do it separate, then when and where are we gonna do this yeah, separate thing? Yeah, because yeah, my yeah. event is happening back to back. Yeah. So just trying to figure out where is the time slot. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it would be cool if I have the wedding vow. It'd be nice. I'll probably cry listening to it <laughs> if I'm there. If I'm lucky enough to be there. I'm the kind Wait, of person. You're the one that have to be in charge of my photos oh, and my videos. Oh, so no. of course you have to be there. <laughs> you probably won't be watching the video with like my sniffles at the back of. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone take over? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't like not choose Wendy. Wendy's <laughs> probably the most perfect person for it because she's a content creator herself. I hope so I do a good job. It's so stressful to be recording people's wedding though. Like, what if you mess up? 
just record everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My yeah, advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you be like, oh, RJ, why you give this to me? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, maybe um, we're also thinking about maybe we're just going to invite everyone just for dinner and just say thank you and stuff huh? like that. So, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't feel that it's a chore, okay? Okay, no. I hope no. you guys don't feel that way. Yeah, yeah I'm like excited <laughs> but nervous at the same time. There's just so much to look forward to in a wedding. Yeah. Um, but I think... Mm, It's more on like the marriage itself, you know, yeah. that's more important, I yeah. think. Like, like at the end of the day, we need to remind ourselves that the wedding, it's just a ceremony. Yeah. Um, it's just the official beginning of yeah. your marriage and the marriage would be the most important thing yeah. in this whole wedding planning process. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. I don't think I have anything else to kind of like yeah. add. Um, I, I think it's a very nice ending to this conversation. Mm-hmm. The rain, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's the sky is turning really dark, and I think if you are watching the video, you will notice that. <laughs> and the wind is getting really strong. Um, so I'm gonna wrap up this episode. Yep. Um, and I'm I wanna wrap it up as with an invitation for all of you who are tuning in. Um, if you have any more questions when it comes to wedding planning or marriage preparation, um, please submit your questions in a form that I have in the description box below because this is just a five-part series of the wedding conversations that I'm having in my podcast. But I want to bring it back again, maybe right before my wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you can ask me questions yes, about all yes. that stuff. Um, I really wanted this first part of the series to be... Like the conversations that you have before deciding that, you know, how do you even get into marriage and all that stuff. So be sure to ask us the questions um, because we will definitely revisit these topics. Yep. Thank you so much again for coming on, no, RJ. Thank you again for having me. I like, hope you guys are not bored of me yet. No, <laughs> you guys are going to see more of RJ for sure on the Small Girl Big Talk podcast because I was telling RJ in the process of editing this um, this series, right? I really, really enjoyed talking to you. Aww. And I really love that you have a very natural presence in front of the camera and on the mic. No. Yeah, so you Shy. guys are... She's going to be forced to be Shy. a part of this show. Um, so just get familiar with uh, RJ because she's definitely coming back. And the best part is she's also a small girl. So it's going to be like small girls. Two small girls. Small girls. Big, big talk. Big, big talk. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We're going to have more of that. Okay. Thank you so much, Wendy, for having me. Uh, I, ha- I always have so much fun as well. I, I was always nervous, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Every time we're about to record something. But I think um, I, I really... Appreciate like you know having me as your guest is is very very fun. Yeah. Thank so, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. We'll bye. see you next one. Bye bye.